Warning, this game is rated M for Mature. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Mason FM's channel. I'm your host, Mason FM, and today, welcome to a Let's Play of Sakura Succubus. Basically, this is a visual novel, dating sim. Um, and, uh, yeah. This is to tide you guys over until Academy Life Forever will resume after the demo is extended. And I heard this is an ongoing series. Anyways, without a f without further ado, let's uh, just jump right into the game. And as you can tell, this is is not been touched. And let's hit start. Okay, so L is to back, Y is to auto, and R is to skip. Gotcha. All right, everybody. Are you having a good time? Yeah! Yay, hearing that makes you me super happy. Thank you for your continued support from the bottom of my heart. This concert hall really is amazing, isn't it? I can't believe I was invited to perform in such an incredible venue. It's what you deserve, a you, a you. We love you, a you, a you. We'll always support you. Ah, uh, you, ah, uh, you, ah, uh, you. Wow, you all are sound so passionate. I'm touched that you care so much about little old me. <laughs> you know, when I first started out, I was just an underground idol. I didn't have many fans, and performing on a big stage like this was nothing more than an impossible dream. I used to cover anime songs on the streets. I worked hard to memorize the lyrics and the dance steps, but I was just a novice and I messed up a lot. I never thought it'd come to this far. Sometimes I thought about giving up. But I know that this that would be spitting in the faces of all you wonderful people who cheered me on even when I was at my lowest. Uh, you, uh, you never gives up. By the way, guys, I'm gonna talk like that until I can actually figure out what to give that ver that per this character a voice. Here's strong, uh, you keep fighting. You can do it. You can do anything. We love you, a you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. When I was still a beginner, I knew I couldn't afford to take a single fan of mine for granted. Your love and affection meant the world to me. You cheered me on, so I knew I had to keep going. I didn't want to let any of you down. If I did that, I wouldn't be able to call myself an idol ever again. My path was a hard one, but I never gave up. I devoted my life, my very soul, to the pursuit of being an idol. And now that I finally made it, I'm standing on this huge stage in front of thousands and thousands of people. And I never felt more humbled in my life. <clears throat> you guys are my light. My life and my love, my heart belongs to every single one of you. And I'm so, I'm going to dedicate this next song to you. This is my latest single, Overflowing Feelings. Let's go. All right, this is what I've been waiting for. This is such a hype song. Well, I'm getting goosebumps already. I can't believe that a you, a you loves us so much. She's not like the other idols but out there. She really does value her fans. She's so pure and beautiful. 
I can't, just can't get enough of that cute smile. I'll support you until the end of time, you are you. For now and forever, you're the only RL 3D girl for me. Real life 3D girl, gotcha. Uh, you, uh, you, uh, you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you, uh, you, uh. Ah, jeez, what am I even doing with my life? <sighs> so this guy's name is Hiroki. Hiroki? I don't know. I stare at the stage, my hands jammed in my pockets. As the lights dim, the crowd falls quiet. It's so silent, you can hear a pen drop. If I was as crazy about a, a Q a U as some of these other fans, I'd probably consider it an immense privilege to even stand in the same room as she is, no matter how far away I am from the stage. I'm sure for some of the guys here, this is the happiest night of their lives. A middle-aged man and standing next to me is actually crying. Some diehard AU fans are acting like the, this concert is a religious experience. And I guess I can't fault them for it. Ridiculous, though, as it, it seems to me. Guns are so very different from idols. Part of me wishes I could join in the hype. But this isn't really my scene. I'm pretty anxious, too. When my boss finds out what happened today, he's going to kill me. If only the trains hadn't been delayed. Then I would have gone here on time. And I would have made it to the front of the crowd like I was ordered to. I brought my camera equipment with me. But I can hardly set it up now. I'm hemmed in by the dozen of men. All wearing a U shirts and holding glow sticks. There's barely enough room to swing around a cat, let alone wield a large industry standard camera. This might be one of the worst nights of my life. This concert hall is huge, but it's not enough to accommodate all of a used fans. She's way too popular. I've stood through about 15 different tracks so far and my ears are still ringing from the crowds yelling and to use adorable vocals. I don't think I can take much more of this. I hope this is the last song. Slowly, almost menacingly, to the background music of a U's latest song begins to build. It grows louder and louder until I can feel it re re reverberating hang through the ground. It's so loud, my teeth start to chatter. My whole body trembles with nervous energy. Lights burst upon the stage like fireworks, once more revealing a used perfect body. The crowd, as expected, goes nuts. Ah, uh, you! Ah, uh, you! Ah, uh, you! Ayu strikes a pose. She holds one arm out as those beckoning the crowd, while her other hand curls around her microphone. Ayu's gaze sweeps across the sea of glow sticks, spreads out before her. She smiles sweetly, as though thanking each and every one of her fans. For a moment, her eyes seem to catch mine. Her eyes, her gaze lingers, hot coals. Upon me, I feel my skin prickle. Has she picked me out of the crowd? Does she even know I'm alive? I'm surrounded by so many people. It's doubtful she can even see me. I'm not even one of a used fans. I'm not at this concert because I love her music. I, if I'm being perfectly honest, I actually think her high-pitched voice is annoying. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Whoever this... Damn. This guy saying how it is. Damn. Doesn't you know this? Is that why she's looking at me? Suddenly I feel exposed. I'm not like the other men here. 
I'm just a filthy imposter. I shouldn't be here at all. The bright lights hurt my eyes. I wince. All the while a use who continues to hold my gaze as she stares at me, her eyes large and all-consuming. Then she begins to sing. I assume it's fast-forwarded. Well, this is just great. Now what am I going to do? I kick at a loose pebble on the sidewalk. It scooters away, bouncing a handful of times before it's swallowed by the darkness. The street is dark, illuminated by only by a few street lamps. It's cold too. I shudder. I'm not sure what time it is. A used concert finished around 12, 21.30. Don't know what that means in that. I don't, that is Navy. I don't know what that means. I'll throw it up on the, I'll throw it up on the screen. You know, when I edit this, there was, is the hand, handshake event I had to go to. I attended an off chance I might be able to get a brief word with the famous AU in a couple of photos, but it wasn't to be. I waited in line to shake AU's holy hand for well over an hour. I was almost at the front of the queue when the handshake event ended, and those of us unfortunate enough not to meet our idol face to face were told to screw off by some security guard. Well, he didn't say it in quite those terms. There were more apologies involved, but that's what it boiled down to. Sorry, but it's getting late, and AU has a busy schedule. We need to cut this handshake event short for now. I apologize to those of you who were unable to see AU. Please support her during her next concert. You'll get another chance to see her then. And with that, we were all dismissed. My camera equipment weighs heavy and the bag looped around my shoulder. I wish I had a chance to actually use any of it. If only the trains hadn't been delayed. If only... If only... It's not my fault that I got to the concert late. There were delays. It couldn't be helped. Try explaining that to my boss on Monday, though. I know he'll pin the blame on the debacle squarely upon my skinny shoulders. It's easier to chew me out than the whole than the whole rail company. <sighs> I seem to be sighing a lot lately. I think it must be stress. That or a critical lack of sleep. Who knew being a photo phot photographer could be such hard work? Wait, I'm a photographer? It's almost midnight on a Saturday. It wouldn't be the first time my boss has made me work during the weekends, and it certainly won't be the last. I came all the way out here so I could take pics of a used latest concert, but I didn't get a single snapshot. What a waste of time! <sighs> I yawn, pressing one hand against my gaping mouth. Since it's late, I should probably head home. I feel exhausted, and I have a, something of a headache. Curling up in bed and resting my head on a nice soft pillow sounds like heaven right about now. But it's rare I come to this part of Tokyo, and part of me is craving a drink. There's a lot of nice, high-class bars around this area, and I sure could use a pick-me-up. If, if I dally too long, the trains will stop running. Then I'll need to spend the night in a hotel. That sounds like a pain. But I can cross that bridge when I get to it. Somewhat cheered by my pain plan, I turn neatly on my heels. There's a pretty nice bar around here, only a short walk away. My aching legs could use some exercise, and the insistent wind helps me bring some color to my cheeks. I have not gone more than a handful of steps, however, when I pause. There is a lone woman crossing the street parallel to me, walking the opposite direction. Her head is low, her feature obscured by the dark, but something about her looks... Familiar. Her hair is a light orange brown color, 
and it's tied back into two cute twin tails. These twin tails stream behind her like banners as she walks, fluttering in the breeze. I'd recognize that hair anywhere, even if I hadn't seen it illuminated by the bright lights of a stage an hour ago. It's a you. No way. I wonder why she's walking the nighttime Tokyo streets alone. Since she has famous idol, shouldn't she be chaperoned by at least a dozen bodyguards? This doesn't make sense. There's no reason you should be out this time like this. Maybe this woman isn't a you? It could be somebody who just so happens to look a lot like her, or a cosplayer. But that's impossible, she's even wearing the same cute pink and white outfit she wore while she was performing. Her skirt is a many-layered, ruffled work of art. A little like a fancy wedding cake, and atop of her head sits a small, well, not at all practical hat. Her arms and legs are bare, exposed to the elements. And she's wearing a very t tall, impressive pair of heels that make a loud cracking hang noise with every step. It was hard for me to see her clearly during her concert, given I was so far away from the stage. Ayu was nothing more than a blur, barely visible above the heads of a thousand tons of fans. Now, however, she's standing impossibly close to me. She's only a few feet away on the other side of the street. She feels less like an incredible untouchable idol and more like a regular human being, which of course she is. Ayu might be beloved by millions of people across Japan, but she's not infallible. She does have she doesn't have magical powers, and she's no goddess to be worshipped at an altar. She's a regular girl. Without those heels of her, she'd probably be pretty short. Aw. She's less impressive now on this windswept street than she was on the stage. But she feels more approachable. I was just lamenting my inability to take a used photo five minutes of its prior. I thought I'd failed my assignment, but this could be my lucky break. If I ask nicely, maybe she'll pose for a pic or two. My career will be saved! Are you? Are you uh, hey, are you? I don't know if I'm saying hey, are you is the right way to address a famous celeb like are you, but neither do I care. These photos aren't going to take themselves! Huh? Ayu pauses. She turns, her lips pursed in a confused frown. Uh, the moment I see her face, the air is knocked out of my lungs. It's definitely her. There's nobody else could be. This is the idol who's captured millions of hearts ever since her official debut. This is the idol I've seen in magazines on the TV screen and plastered on billboards all over Tokyo. It's the same idol I saw, albeit begrudgingly, as she performed on stage, bathed in a sea of lights. I can't let her go. The future of my career is riding on this. I don't want to be fired! Are you? What? Ayu takes a step back, alarmed. Who? Who are you? Don't come any closer to me, you creep. I'm carrying pepper spray in my bag. I'm not going... I'm not afraid to use it on a mongrel like you. That's fine, you can pepper spray me all, or call a me a mongrel or anything you want. You can't even ask me to bow down like before your feet. Anything's fine, so as long as you just let me take your photo. A, uh, a photo? You mean like an upskirt photo? Are you some sort of pervert? No, no, no I'm not. I'm just a humble photographer. And I want to, to be, to do my job. Please, won't you pose for me? Yu doesn't seem to moved by my cries. If anything, she just looks downright disgusted. She wrinkles her nose. Whatever happened to appreciating all her fans, huh? And takes a few more hundred hurried back steps back. Leave me alone, you virgin loser. I'm not interested in posing for a so-called photographer like you. But you please listen. No, back off or I'll call the police. I mean it. That's a, I think that's what she would actually sound like if she's talking to him like this. So yeah, this will be her voice. 
You're nothing more than an insect to me, and I have not, no qualms about squashing you. Leave me alone. But I don't. I promise of maybe not being shouted at by my rape boss, or indeed fired, is too he heady a holy grail for me to pass up. I take another step forth. You tries to retreat, but I'm faster than she is, and she is wearing a very high pair of heels, and she falls. You start, start totters. She teeters. It looks like she's going to fall. She opens her mouth alarmed, and a high-pitched squeal is emits from her lips. Kya! A uh, kya? I don't know. Uh, you, wait, hold on, I got you. You might have called me a mongrel and a bug, and it's true, I have no fond feelings for her music. But I still don't want her to get hurt. You need to try to help her. And so, I throw a caution in the, to the wind. I dive forth, seizing a used wrist from my arm, and pull her teetering body against mine. Haha, <laughs> what are you? Ah! Unfortunately to, for me, gravity is harsh mistress, and I'm unable to resist her. I fall over backwards, a used prone body still pressed against my own. Mm! I grit my teeth together, ready for impact. As I fall, time seems to slow to a trickle. The seconds turn to minutes, which turn to hours. And then, with a loud thud and a whirring crunch, I collapse against the cold gray sidewalk. Ugh. I lie there for a few moments, winded, and stare up at the starry night sky. My head is pounding like the speakers at a used concert, and my back is killing me. I hope I haven't broken my any bones. Gingerly, I twitch my fingertips. They seem to be in working order. At least, as a photographer, my fingers are pretty important. Then I try to sit up, but I can't. There's a weight pressing down upon my chest. It's... Ah! Center! Uh, uh, you? The famous idol Akiyu, Japan's beloved sweetheart, is sitting astride paid me like a cowgirl. Her legs are spread, her thighs pinning, pinning me in place while her skirt is all rumpled up. She holds on one hand to her head, wincing as she tries to gather her bearing. She looks dazed and confused, but I don't think she's hurt. I was able to shield her from the worst of, of the fall. I took the full brunt of the pain for her sake. All to protect her, her pretty face, and I'm glad it worked. Who'd want to look at a photo of the famous idol with a bruised eye and a split lip? It, I'd get into a world of trouble. Well, if I tried to publish pics like that. Speaking of taking photos... Crap! I'd almost completely forgotten about my bat hag slung across my chest, filled with expensive top-of-the-range equipment. I didn't buy any of that equipment myself. It was on the lease. It was on the lease by the, my company. My boss always warns me before I head off on my assignments to take care of the expensive camera and the lenses he trusts me with. This equipment is worth more than your life. If you break it, I'll break one of your arms. Do you understand, Agasawara? Oh, that's his last name. Damn it! The words force their way out of my chest. My lungs feel constrained by both of my mouth anxiety and the weight of a used body. I haven't checked inside my bag yet, but I'm already fearing the worst. The crunch sound I must have heard as I fell over. What if that wasn't my skull crumpling on itself like a paper plate, but all my equipment? If my camera's broken, it'll be impossible to take a pic of you, even though she's right on top of me. I've screwed up yet again. My boss is going to be so pissed off. Why'd I have to come over... Come over all chivalric at such a critical junction. My job's on the line as it is, without adding wanton destruction of company property to my list of sins. Ayu might be attractive, but she isn't worth this much trouble. 
Now I want nothing to more than to drink myself into oblivion. Hey, Yummy, you. I blink up at you. Her pretty face swims before me, rendered vague and hazy thanks to my pounding headache. I'm sorry about all that, uh... I know you must be in a state of shock, but, uh, would you mind getting off me? It's hard to breathe, you see! Ayu doesn't reply. Instead, she stares at me, her eyes blank and unseeing, her mouth slack. Her soul hasn't escaped from her body, has it? Has she gone into a state of catonic shock? Since Ayu is an idol, and popular one at that, she must be bound by quite a strict contract. Most idols aren't allowed to spend much time with members of the opposite sex. Could this be the first time she's ever been so close to and personal with a man? A man who isn't even her father, I mean? That might explain why she's staring at me so intently. She looks like she just clapped eyes on an extraterrestrial. Damn. I curse once more, my head and lungs on fire. As if it wasn't bad enough, that's... I've potentially broken tens of thousands of yen worth of camera equipment. It's beginning to look like I might have broken a U2. I've only reached out to grab her because I want to help. I was trying to spare her from sustaining too much of damage. I never meant to cause her so much harm. A U, um... I, I can't let myself panic. If I do, I might startle you even more. I need to be cool, calm, and personal like a doctor. Though given the circumstances, that's quite a tall order. The way of a U's body is pressing d against me. I can feel the warmth of her skin through my clothes. Not the mention of the fullness of her thighs. Her lips pursed, and her cheeks are dusted with a red blush. She looks utterly delectable, much like the fake strawberry that adorns her tiny top hat. I don't think much of a you singing voice, but I can finally see, in painfully clear detail, why she's so enduringly popular. She's insanely good looking, and it's unlike a lot other celebs who hides behind extensive photo editing, she looks even better in person. She smells so good too, kind of like strawberries. The cool wind runs through a use hair, wafting her scent towards me. Her unique aroma fills my nostrils while her body consumes my eyes. Now my five senses know nothing about other than a you. Uh, <laughs> the hardness and coldness of the sidewalk melts away, as does the throbbing pain in the back of my head. In my head. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter I that I can't breathe. I want this moment to last a lifetime, but that's hardly practical. If anybody sees us like this, we're done for. A used reputation will be in shreds. Unless, of course, she claims that I molested her, then I can forget about my work-related woes and be sent straight to prison instead. Yahoo! Fuck, this is bad. I need to try and wriggle my way out of this position, or things will get bad from worse. Are you please? We can't stay like this. Not in the middle of a public street. I don't want to sound rude, but would you mind moving for both our sakes? Ah, uh, huh. Are you breathes heavily. Her voluptuous chest rises and falls, and her thighs kinch ab about my waist. Rather than extricating herself from me, she's gripping me more intensely than ever. You know what? Actually, I don't think I'll let it, because this doesn't seem, uh, too revealing. Uh, you, please! I try to dissuade her, but to little avail. Her finger grip the fabric of my shirt, and then does something truly improbable. She begins to grind her hips against me. Uh, uh mm. I lie there like a pinned bug. I'm so stunned, I hardly know what to think or feel. This, this, is, this is, you know what, be right back, folks. Uh, you know what, if you guys ever get this game, you can choose the opposite what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this is incredible. 
if if this perfect paragon of feminine beauty keeps rubbing against me, I won't be responsible for my future actions. She's so cute, and the little moans spilling from her mouth are to die for. Nah. <laughs> I was never a big fan of you, but if this keeps up, she might just convert me. After this over and done with, will I be obligated to attend the rest of her concerts? Will I have to fork out the cash to buy all her newest CDs, her merch, and tickets for her performances? It'll be hard to do that to do that if I lose my job, though. It'll be even harder if I get sent to prison. And now I should put an end to this, but I'm a weak man. Yu's undeniably good-looking, and she's more appealing than ever when she isn't talking in that annoying high-pitched voice of hers. Her moans. Nah. Huh. Huh. They're so sexy. It should be a crime. I want to feel more of a Yu's perfect body against mine. I want to hold her. I want to kiss her. I. 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 Ah! Ayu blinks. She looks down at me. Her fingers still curled about the fabric of my shirt. Of her shirt. Her lips pursed. Her eyes don't look glassy like they did before. And though she is still blushing, her brow is furrowed. She doesn't look like she's enjoying herself. In fact, she seems downright pissed. You. You. Yes, what is it? You. You. I? You pervert! Uh, you slaps my cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the awkward pause, folks. That, that, that's just funny. <laughs> um, anyways. <laughs> uh, you slaps my cheek. She slaps it so hard my teeth rattle. And stars explode behind my eyelids. That's... Probably going to leave a mark. <laughs> you think? <laughs> or you know. <laughs> Damn, now the right side of my face is throbbing. What a nice way to cap off the night. <laughs> I I can't believe you would try to take advantage of me like that. Uh, out in the open, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're the absolute worst. I have to do it like this voice, because that's how she's supposed to sound like, because she didn't get off when he warned her her to begin with. Oh my gosh. Ayu pushes herself off me. She gets to her feet, still teetering in her heels, then glowers. Your mother would be ashamed if she could see you right now. You're less than an insect. You're even less than a worm. You don't even deserve to exist on the same planet as those worthy creatures. At least worms and ants and spiders help the environment. They're part of this ecosystem. But you're just a waste of space. You don't deserve to live. Why don't you just die? Better yet, I'll kill you myself. I really will kill you. Ayu doesn't try to help me back up to my feet. Instead, she spits vitriol at me. Even more corrosive than the harshest of chemicals. I try to get up, but Ayu doesn't make it easy for me. Slapping my face wasn't enough to satisfy her self-righteous rage because she kicks me in my shin. I stagger back, hissing, doubled over with pain. Damn it. A used heels are very sharp and pointed. Being kicked by them hurts. At least a you hatred it helped to ease my raging passions. I don't feel turned on anymore. Instead, I feel pained, upset, and confused. I wasn't trying to take advantage of you. You fell, and I was went to study you. It's because of me that you didn't hurt yourself. Couldn't you thank me for that at least? Thank you. The you stares at me incredulously. Why should I thank you? I never would have fallen if you hadn't called out to me, you moron. Well, I guess she's not wrong about that. That's one point to you. Besides, I bet you wanted me to land on top of you. You're practically throbbing with anticipation. You're the worst. And I never want to see you ever again. You're lucky I'm not going to call the police, you sick fuck. 
Never talk to me ever again. That is an order. Hmm. <laughs> Ayu turns and marches off. She mutters to herself all the while, her arms swinging back and forth at her sides like a soldier's. I'm not sure what she's saying exactly, but a choice bits and pieces of her angry monologue filter back to me on the cold breeze. Loser, what do, is, who does he think he is? Attractive or anything? Not my type, so... Like that before. Must be a trick. Don't let him get the better of you. There's nothing special about that guy. I don't move. I'm so stunned by my unexpected encounter with a you. I can only stand their mouth agape. It's only a, after a few minutes that have elapsed and a you has faded from view that I finally return to my senses. My head's still quite throbbing and my back aches, but I don't think it's broken or anything. So that's something to be thankful for, at least. But the same can't be said for my camera. Shit. I take one curtsy look inside my bag and soon wish I hadn't bothered. There's no two ways about it. My boss is definitely going to kill me. To the bar! <laughs> we are going to need a drink for uh, that crap tonight. Ugh. What a day. I'm sitting in a smoky bar, nursing some cocktail or another. I'm not sure what it's called, and neither do I really care. I was so out of it when I arrived at this bar, and more than a little intimidated by the vast selection of drinks available, I asked the bartender to make up whatever cocktail they wanted. The cocktail is comforting, amber color, and it tastes faintly fruity. It's not bad, though, in my current state of misery. I wouldn't say no to something even harder. Then again, getting too drunk might be a poor idea. My head's still killing me. Though alcohol can seem sometimes take the edge off of worldly pains, at other times it can only serve to exacerbate them. I don't know how to pronounce it. Given I've been so unlucky today, I'd rather not take my chances. I sip at my drink, only half tasting it. Jazzy piano music fills the air, mingled with that of casual conversation. This bar is fairly popular one, and several men and women, through mostly men, are sitting about drinking. Some of the men are in business suits, while the women wear sparky evening dresses, their faces carefully made up, and their feet wedged into perilously high-heeled shoes. I wonder if these men just finished work. It's a weekend, but that doesn't necessarily mean R&R for Japan's bankers or businessmen. Some companies operate even during Saturdays and Sundays. Their workers are obliged to work long into the night. I pity all the, these guys with their slicked back hair and their slightly rumpled suits. At least I would if I had had such an awful day myself. Not only did I fail to take a photos of a you, but I was also slapped across my face by the self-same woman. Then, to cap things off, I broke the very expensive camera equipment my boss commanded me he, to take care of. Of, I'm not so I'm not look I'm so not looking forward to going to work on Monday. My boss is going to eviscerate me. At least the businessmen around me, wary though they look, seem to be having fun. They probably earn a lot more than I do, and I doubt their bosses are as draconian as my own. My boss is a jumped up man with an inflated sense of self importance who loves to breathe down the necks of his employees. He chews us out for the smallest of errors, and he seems to take a genuine sadistic delight in making the newest hires cry. He's never made me cry. I wouldn't want to give him the satisfaction, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little afraid of him. I've generally kept in his good graces for the three years I've been working under him, but that's going to come to an end on Monday. I'd like to think I, he won't fire me as much as I dislike my job. I kind of need to pay the bills, but that might be a touch too optimistic. Even if he doesn't fire me, which in 
is a distinct possibility. The costs of this smash camera are gonna come directly out of my earnings. Either way, I'll be in trouble. I guess I'll be eating instant noodles for the rest of the month. This will be the last time I'll be able to go to the a bar too. I'm up around over my drink, my fingers buried in my hair. I'm suddenly very aware of how expensive this cocktail was, and I want to make sh it last for as long as possible. Whether I get fired or not, finances are going to be tight. I can't afford to spend too much. How I envy the businessmen around me, forking out bills for fancy drinks and snacks. Pretty women, maybe girlfriends, but they could be escorts, it's hard to tell. Hang on their arms, laughing at all their bad jokes, their lips shimmering with gloss. When was the last time I, a pretty girl draped herself over me like that, huh? Wait, well, uh, strictly speaking, it was about half an hour ago, you making herself pretty comfortable on my lap until she slapped me. That's another thing to feel rotten about. That he used so sadistic. She's really got my hopes up. I take another sip of my alcohol, my cocktail. I hope it might lighten my dreary thoughts, but it's actually making me feel worse. Maybe I should hurry up and get out of here. I'm too broke to get drunk, and the train stop will stop running soon. I knock the bas back the rest of my cocktail, then get to my feet. I'm ready to make a beeline for the exit when this happens. Oh my, are you leaving already? That is a shame. It's not even midnight yet. A sultry voice calls me back. I turn, blinking, then gasp. Damn! Now that is a girl I can get behind with and talk to. Sitting by the counter is an incredibly attractive woman. She has dark tan skin, which contrasts with her almost bare bone white hair. I call it bare bone. I didn't read it correctly. She's dressed in a business attire, but her pin stripped suit and white shirt gape open to reveal an ample bosom. One of her legs is crossed over the other, and in one hand it holds a glass. Her eyes are green, a little like cats, and they're lidded. A playful smile puckers. Wait, wait, wait. Back? But yeah, her lips and her face is flushed, probably from the alcohol. Something about her looks familiar, but I can't quite place her face, to be quite frank. Her large bosom is attracting most of my attention, as are her thighs. Of course! I do not discriminate, but damn, I like all aspects of women. I mainly like their brains. You could crush a watermelon between those thighs like that. Okay. Why is she really calling out to me, but why? I don't think I'm particularly unattractive, but my fly-away hair and my baggy jeans are the pinnacles of fashion, or good taste. I should be- it should be obvious at a glance that I don't pull in half the salary as some of the big shot uh, businessmen around here do. Must have been mistaken. It can't be- have been me calling- uh, she was calling out too. There's no way. I turn, ready to walk away once more, but- Hey, she. Since she, it was described sultry. I'll go with this. Hey, I was talking to you. You know, it's rude to leave a lady in the lurch. Didn't your mother teach you any manners? <laughs> the woman's laugh is throaty and does an, any number of curious things to my body. I can feel my hair standing on end, and my mouth feels dry despite the alcohol I consumed. I guess she really was talking to me. Um, I beg your pardon? I glance back at the femme fatal doing my best not to gop at her. Her chest? I'm not a teenager anymore, damn it! Do I know you? You look familiar, though I don't think we've met before. Oh, I look familiar, do I? I suppose that's hardly a surprise. My name is Marina Wakatsuki. Hey, Marina. 
Does that ring any bells? Ah. Now that... She said that it, her name does sound very familiar. The newspaper I work at, Sakura Daily, ran an article on her just a few weeks ago. Wakatsuki Marina is a famous entrepreneur and businesswoman. Half Japanese, half, half, South, half South African, I think. Marina is the head of a world-famous brand of designer clothes, perfume, cosmetics, and more. She's one of the wealthiest women in Tokyo. She's, though she's no mo no idol, I think she might be more famous than a you. I run into two famous celebs today, all in under an hour. What are the odds of that? Pretty high if you're common. While well, you was content to slap me and call me a pervert, Marina actually seems interested in instigating a conversation. This is amazing. I'm a photographer for a local paper, so I've met a few B-list celebrities in my time, but I never before have met a woman that excludes class and glamour like Wakatsuki Marina. Be still, oh, my beating heart. My, my, you look certainly su look surprised. You will attract flies if you let your mouth uh, open, hang open like that, dear. It's not a very attractive look. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's alright, you don't need to apologize. I'm not offended. People often gop when they see me. I'm quite used to it. I am a celebrity, you know. Yes, um, I'm aware. I, I can't believe that I didn't recognize you sooner. <laughs> I bow again, which makes me makes Marina giggle anew. Like I said, you don't need to apologize. I get enough of that at work. It's always, yes ma'am, right away. And we're so terribly sorry. Well, workers all respect me, but they don't, they're so distant. It's almost like they're afraid of me. I know I'm very wealthy, beautiful and charismatic and so on, but at the end of the day I'm still a normal woman. I get tired of people groveling before me. Sometimes I just want to have a normal conversation. Oh right, I, I see. I'm so an apology is fully formed in my tongue, but I can't get myself out before I can say anything foolish. This must be why Marina called me over, despite the vast gulf of differences between our wealth and social standing. She's tired of being treated like a celeb, and no doubt owing a cap capricious whim of the wealthy. She wants to speak of to the member of the peanut gallery like me. This is a bit sudden. My heart is thudding incredibly hard, but well, if Marina wants to speak to a nobody like me, who am I to refuse her? Now, why don't you sit your cute bottom back down at the counter, sweetie? Don't you want to buy another drink? I wouldn't mind, but I don't have much money. That's all right. I'll be more than happy to foot the bill. That's, um, that's very kind of you, but are you sure? I won't want to put you out. Nonsense. Marino waves one manicured hand carelessly. I'm a wealthy businesswoman. A drink or two is hardly going to break the bank. <laughs> I guess you're right about that. I flush embarrassed that I, a mere photographer, even thought to question the depths of Marina's pockets. She's infinitely richer than I could ever aspire to be. I know common courtesy dictates that men should foot the bill during dates, but... Screw it! This isn't really a date, and Marina's the one who offered to buy me a drink I, in the first place. I think it's fine to flaunt con convention every once in a while. If you don't mind, then sure, I, I, I'll happy if you bought me one. Bought me a drink. That's the spirit. I like a man who can hold his liquor. Bartender, can you get a couple of lemon highballs over here? I sit down next to Marina while she spals me with alcohol. We drink together for a while, idly exchanging banter, all the while I try not to stare at Marina's chest. I can hardly believe that this is happening. What's to become of my life? About half an hour ago, and three more lemon dry highballs later, Marina shoots me a curious glance and says, So, Hiroki, why do you look so down? Did something happen? 
I guess you could say that, yeah, but, uh, who is really that, uh, but was it really that obvious? Quite. That's why I called out to you. I couldn't stand to see such a handsome young man looking so, well, defeated. I know we're relatively strangers, but as the old saying goes, a problem shared is a problem halved. I wouldn't mind him telling me what's on your mind. I don't know if you want to hear it. If it's nothing that interesting, it's work stuff, I guess. Uh, as a businesswoman, I'm well, very well acquainted with troublesome work stuff. I have plenty of problems of my own to deal with. I figure as much. That's why I didn't want to burn you with mine. But... Marina leans in a little closer to me. I can feel the silky softness of her silvery hair against my flushed skin. I think it would be nice to listen to somebody else's woes. I might take my mind off my own concerns, and who knows... Listening to your problems might help me think of a way to resort these pesky problems of mine. Would you mind telling me e e what's wrong, dear? I'd love to get to know you better. You're so cute after all. Marina draws her pink cat-like tongue along her lower lip. Why, well, you're so you're good enough to eat. Oh my. I I, I don't think I'm all that good looking. But if you want to listen to my belly aching, I suppose I can oblige. You did buy me a few drinks, after all. Now, comfortably light-headed, I offer Marina a small smile and launch into my tail. I'm a photographer for the so for the Sakura Daily, you know? Do you know it? Oh, uh, yes. I was interviewed by an employee of that newspaper only a few weeks ago prior. So I wasn't misremembering. We really have run a piece of Marina before. It's n nice to know. I'm not going. I'm not going senile, I guess. Well, uh, my boss sent me out to a concert by you tonight. She's a popular idol. Yes, I know about her, or I know her very well, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah, really. I'm surprised. You. would You'd be surprised to know how close we are. <laughs> I look at Marina, intrigued. She doesn't look like the sort of person who's familiar with the music styling of a QAU. Marina looks like she's been into classical music or jazz, not high-energy J-pop numbers. I guess you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, you're right, you can't. Well, I was meant to be taking a some pics of you while she was pouring, but there were a few problems. The trains were delayed, and I arrived at the concert late. It had already started when I got there. I couldn't get any front row of the crowd. I was shunted all the way to the back, behind a whole sea of people. There was no space, and there was too many bodies in the way, and I couldn't set up my camera. I had no chance to take any photos. Oh no, that sounds like quite the disaster. It was. My boss is going to kill me when he finds out. And that's not the end of it. I give Marina a quick, abridged version of the night's events. I tell her about my gloomy night time wandering through the city, then my chance encounter with Ayu. I don't go into every single detail. I don't know, for instance, to tell Marina how excited I got when Ayu fell on me. But I do tell Marina you slapped me for my efforts, then called me a pervert. I didn't th want to do anything inappropriate to her. I just want was trying to do my job. I lam I lamented it helplessly, my words falling in, in a tumble from my throat. When lubricated with alcohol, it's surprisingly easy to gush about uh, most embarrassing of things. She slapped me really hard too. The whole side of my head is still smarting. Ah oh, yes. I can see a red mark on your face. Now uh, that you mention it, she must have done a number on you. She really did. For an idol, she had a surprising amount of upper body strength. I didn't know she was so powerful she can start. She certainly doesn't look like it. She's so tiny, and she wears so much pink! 
Idols are made of tougher stuff than you might think. They pour a lot of time and effort into perfecting their dance routines. And they work long hours. I'm not surprised that he used so strong. Though I wish she'd learned to use that head of hers. She's so thoughtless. I really am sorry she caused you so much distress, Haroki. It's fine. What's done is done. I'm trying not to think about it too much. And the alcohol is certainly helping. My surroundings look hazy and unreal, and my mind's pleasantly numb. One or two things about Marina's words do seem quite odd, though. It sounds like you know you quite well. Not just as an idol, but as a person. I suppose you could say that. Now, you and I are close, like I said. We're not family, but we might as well be. She's like... A naughty little sister to me, I suppose. What? Really? I didn't know that. A few people do. My relationship with Ayu isn't widely publicized. I use a good good at putting on a cute act before the cameras, but she has a short temper, and she can be quite nasty at times. Do you want me to have a word with her? I'm quite, really quite upset that she would treat you so badly. Uh, oh no, it's fine. Like I said, it's too late to worry about that now. Maybe so, but I do sympathize with you. You must have a hard, r had a rough a night. Well, that's just the part of being an adult. I'm used to it. The alcohol has helped so much, so as talking to you. Thanks for listening to my worries, Marina. It's no problem at all. I'm glad I was able to aid you in some small manner. Oh, I wish I could do more. It's partially my fault that you was so rude to you. If I disciplined her better, she never would have slapped you. Keeping a you in line is my job. Lady Yui asked me to keep an eye on her, and I failed. I feel most humbled. Lady Yu? Yeah, you met- Who's Lady Yu? I wonder who that is, based on, on the title Marina gave her. She sounds like a royalty. Is she a foreign princess? But what connection does she have with Marina and you? I'm a little lost. But before I can ponder this, I feel a soft sensation against my thigh. Marina is gripping my upper leg with one hand, and her manicured nails digging through my fabrics of my pants. Hiroki... Marina leans in. Her voice falls to a soft, sultry whisper, which envelopes up my body like a can like a caress. I cannot overstate how sorry I am that you caused you so many problems. She's a naughty girl, and I'll scold her later. But for now, I would like to apologize on her behalf. Would you mind coming back to my office with me? You're a fine specimen of a man. It's been a long time since I last found prey worthy of my unique attention. You intrigued me at the moment I saw you. So please. Marina licks her lips, her eyes heavy with expectation. Don't let me down. My, my, I must say I'm impressed. I didn't think you'd be able to go for quite that long, particularly with all that alcohol inside of you. You're quite an interesting man, Hiroki. <laughs> Marina laughs, her eyes half-lidded as she runs her fingers through my hair. She's sitting cross-legged upon the floor, wearing her typical office attire. I, meanwhile, am lying on Marina's lap, wearing nothing but my underwear. Under normal circumstances, I'd probably feel exposed, but... Well... These circumstances are anything other than normal. Say that again. I met the famous businesswoman, Wakatsuki Marina, in a small bar on a swanky street. After playing with me, a, hang me with a few drinks, she invited me back to her office to, you know... Have some fun. Then we enjoyed ourselves. Now my madness has subsided somewhat. I'm beginning to feel the consequences of my actions. 
My whole body aches, as though I've been thrown on top of the Tokyo Tower, and my head is killing me. At least I can rest on Marina's delectable thighs. How cute. Marina continues to run her hands through my hair. Her voice light... He... He... Lift... Lift... Is that lifting? No, lilting. Sing song. There we go. I can... I thought that was an F for a moment. Though I put Marina through the ringer, she emerged from our lovemaking relatively unscathed. She doesn't seem all... Uh, seem at all out of breath, unlike me. In fact, she's even smiling. I guess Marina's forged from pretty tough stuff. Is that prerequisite if you want to get ahead of in the business world? She has far more stamina than I do. Marina... I blink up at Marina's pretty face, my gaze unfocused. Her visage swims before me, and my temples start to pound something fierce. Shit. Yes. Marina, for her part, only smiles. She looks down at me, her bone-white hair trailing against my cheek, and says sweetly, What is it, dear? You, um, I was just wondering. Did that feel good for you? You're concerned about my enjoyment. Yeah, I, I was so into it, I didn't really think about you. But that's not fair. I was acting selfish. My, ma, you really are a sweetheart. How consensuous you are. I don't think I'm very sweet. I behaved like an animal earlier. Maybe you did, but I quite like that. I'm fond of men who can take charge. Though it's much appreciated that you care about my see, care about me so much. <laughs> to answer your earlier concerns, yes, I enjoyed myself. I haven't had a chance to let off steam like that in a long while. Ah, thank goodness. Marina's gentle reassurance elicit a small sigh of relief. Now that I know she's enjoyed herself too, I feel like I can relax. Ah. I yawn, sleep washes over me in waves. My eyelids feel very heavy, and it's struggle to keep my eyes open. I nestle my head against Marina's warm lap and close my eyes. My temple's still pounding, but I feel surprisingly at ease with Marina. This might sound weird, but given everything we just did, but there's something almost motherly about her. I can feel my conscience slipping away, but as I fall into the land of slumber, I swear I can hear Marina's voice light and sing song as always. What a charming specimen you are. I was drawn but to you by mere curiosity at first, I'll admit, but you've made quite the impression. You're a sweet boy with a surprising amount of stamina, and your scent is very, very unique. I never met a human boy quite like you before. Maybe I'll make you mine. I'm sure that will make you jealous. She always has been so possessive. But don't worry, my cute, precious Hiroki. No matter what happens, I'll always let you rest your weary head on my lap. <laughs> Laughing softly, Marina bows her head. I can feel her warm breath against my cheek, coupled with the softness of her silver hair. Maybe this is all a dream. It doesn't feel real. real. Reality is starting to slip from my grasp like melting snow. But I'm sure as my breathing evens out and my mind drifts away, that I can feel a soft sensation against my lips. And that's where we're going to leave this off, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And follow me on Twitch. Link is in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next stream and or video. Peace out, everybody. And bye-bye.